Could I talk to you for a second? Sure, neighbor. Now, what can I do for you? Can I get some directions, please, sir? Sure enough, where are you heading? A place called the Ponderosa. Could you tell me where that is, please? You don't please? need any more directions. You're on it right now. We are. Howdy, man. Well, could you tell me where I can find, uh, Mr. Ben Cartwright? Sure, that's my pa. Well, I'd like to talk to him. I've got some business with him. Well, is there anything I can help you with? I don't think so. Could you just direct me to the house? Right-o. I'll get my horse. Wait, I'd, I'd better get it for you. Hey, well, I can get my own horse. No, no, better let me. By the way, my name's Wiley Kane. Wiley? That's my sister, Annie. Hi, Annie, how are you? Nice to meet you. It's a, it, it's a pleasure, I'm sure, Mr. Cartwright. It's really beautiful, isn't it? I'd forgotten how pretty it is, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, you've been here before? Once. A long time ago, when, when I was just a little girl. I'm glad we're back, though. Wally says we might be here for a long time. How do you mean here? Right on the Ponderosa? He says we might be here for a whole year. Annie! That's enough. I told you if there was any explaining to do, I'd be the one to do it. Here you are, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. I'm sorry, Wally. I was just telling him how it used to be. Annie Kane and her brother Wiley. It's my father. Hello. How do you, how do, you do, Mr. Conrad? Hi, right, horse. Say hi to Wiley and Annie Kane. Hi, Wiley. How are you? I met Wiley out on the road. He said he wanted to come over here and talk to you about something. Oh, well, uh, sit down, please. Uh, how about a cup of coffee? No, no, thank you, Mr. Conrad. Well, what do you want to talk about? Doesn't the name Kane mean something to you? Kane. No, I don't think so. Sam Kane was our father. Sam Kane. Well, <laughs> I forgot all about that. Sam Kane was a uh... a thief. You can say, it, Mr. Cartwright, it's all right. He robbed you. Well, there was a land deal, but that was that was a long time ago. That doesn't change things. And Annie and me are here to pay it back. Now, look, I'm, I'm strong. I can do almost anything around a farm or a ranch. And what I don't know, I can pick up pretty quick. Annie can cook, she can launder, she can iron, and, and, and she can... Hold on, now, wait a minute. Are you suggesting that you want to work this debt off? Yes, sir. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, that would take... A year, that's what I figure. Look, Wiley, you know, you ain't, uh, you ain't responsible for nothing your dad did. Let me explain this to you, Mr. Cartwright. The name Kane was a respected name, and I intend to see that it's that way again. Hmm. You know, Wiley... I find what you're trying to do most commendable. But 
Aren't you wasting your lives away trying to erase your father's reputation? Mr. Cartwright, there are towns where decent women don't even speak to my sister because she's Sam Kane's daughter. There are towns where men have beat me half to death because I'm his son and have spit in my face. Now, Sam Kane stole something from Annie and me, too. Something we just got to win back. And we're going to win it back. People's respect. You know, this is such a big country, though, Wiley. So many places with the name Sam Kane doesn't mean anything. We could go out and earn your own reputation. You mean run away? Hmm? No. I mean, start fresh. Mr. Cartwright, my father ran from things all his life. He never stopped running. Now, I'm not going to follow in his footsteps. Uh, is your father still living? No, he's... My father's dead. Well, now, we don't know that for sure. I mean, we don't have any actual proof, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, he's dead, all right, if he was alive. I, w I would have heard about it. You can bet on that. Just how long do you intend to continue working off your father's debts? Oh, this is the last one. When we finish here, wipe the slate clean. Now, do we get the job, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, yes, I'll give you a job. Until we can find some better way of working this out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Well, it's that settled. I'll uh, help you bring in your things. Would you uh, like to see your room? Come in. Hi. I brought you some extra blankets. It's pretty cold here at night. Thank you, Mr. Carwright. You can just put him over on the bed. Now, I'll put him over on the bed if you call me Joe. Well, Wally says that Look, we... if you go around here calling everybody Mr. Carwright, nobody's gonna know who you're talking to. All right, Joe. Yeah. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? How, is everything all right? Oh, I love it. This is the first real room I've had in a long time. How long have you and Wiley been traveling around like this? Oh, I guess about three years. Well, that is a long time. That's why I like this room so much. Everything's so solid. So permanent. I, I guess I mean it's a home. You read all those books? Hmm? No, no, not all of them. Most of them, I guess. There's so many. Uh, we have a snowstorm around here. You either learn to like to read or you start talking to the furniture. This, uh... Let's see. Here. This one, this is, this is one of my big favorites. It's about whaling. I guess it's as close as I'll ever get to a whale, and that's why I like it so much. Hey, you're welcome to read it if you'd like. Of course, I guess it's not much of a book for a girl, but you, you can if you want to. I uh, never did, did learn how. Well, we've been doing a lot of traveling. Well, just never got around to it. I know how to spell my name, though. How come Wiley didn't take time to teach you? Well, Wiley just doesn't think of things like that. Oh. I guess he's too busy thinking about your father, huh? Look, I got an idea. You're gonna be here with us for a little while. Why don't I teach you? Well, I, I don't think Wiley would want Well, I didn't ask you what Wiley wanted. Look, it'll only take about an hour a day. It certainly isn't gonna bring the world to an end, just an hour a day, is it? Now, do you want to learn? Yes, I would. All right, we'll start tomorrow, right after lunch, one hour. Oh, that'll be fine. Good. Joe? Thank you, Joe. Get a good night's sleep.
Yeah, that's very, very good. But, uh, of course, that, that doesn't spell Annie. That doesn't say Annie? No, no, that, see, that, that says Ann. The, this E is silent. You just pretend it's not even there. It's silent. Why? Well, I don't know why. It's just the way it is. See, look, if, if you want to make this Annie, want to make this Annie, then we have to put right here, between there, an I, see? A-N-N-I-E. See, now the I is silent. Now, that's, that's Annie. Are you teasing me? No, I'm not teasing you. No, that, that's the way it is. Here, look. Now, here's how you spell my name. J-O-E. Joe. Joey? No, 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 not Joey. Joe. The E is silent. The E is silent, right. See, the way we had it here? Got it there. Um, uh, spell bow like I'd wear in my hair. Bo. I, I think we ought to wait on Bo. I think it's going to confuse you. Well, now, isn't that spelled the same way as you spell your name, only with a different first letter? Mm-mm. I'll, I'll go ahead and show you anyway. B O W. Now, that's Bo. Hmm. Well, that's Joe. Mm-hmm. And that's Bo. Right. Does make sense. Well, I know it doesn't make sense, but uh, I guarantee you it's going to get harder before it gets easier. See, because, look, see this bow? That also spells bow. You know, like when a man bows to a woman. Same thing. You are teasing me. No, I'm not. I'm not. It's, it's funny, but that's the way it is. That spells bow mm -hmm. and bow. Like a bow of a tree. Mm-mm. <sighs> Haven't you ever heard of a bow of, of a bough of a tree? Well, certainly I've heard of a bough of a tree. Of course, I've heard of a bough of a tree, but that... See, a bough of a tree... Oh, yeah. Look, here. See? B-O-U-G-H. What's that? That is the bough. That's the bough when you say bough of a tree. I thought you said it was bow. Look, they're both, well, they're not both, but one is both. See, B-O-W is both. That's bow and bow, but B-O-U-G-H is only bow. It can't be bow, too. The... Joe Cartwright, I think you're terrible. Making fun of someone that doesn't even know how to read or write. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Look, look, I, I know it doesn't make sense, and sometimes it's not going to, but that's just the way it is. You weren't teasing me? Ah, you know better than that. I wouldn't tease you. Addie. I was just passing the kitchen and I thought I smelled something burning. Oh, the pies! <laughs> Joe, tomorrow? Sure thing. And E is silent pies. What about tomorrow? Hmm? What about tomorrow? Oh, I'm just helping Annie with the reading. Well, no more. Hmm? And no more what? No more reading. <laughs> Why not? Just because I said no more reading. Why don't we let Annie decide that, huh? Well, all I was doing was trying to teach Annie to learn to read. And for absolutely no reason, he says no. No more lessons, leave her alone. All I was trying to do was help her. You know, Joe, this uh, Wiley has been more than just a brother to this girl. He's been father and mother to her, too. Oh, yeah, but I don't think she needs all that. I think you ought to let her live her own life. Oh, but she's part of this whole thing, this strange journey of his in which he's trying to pay for all the sins his father's committed. But why does Wiley force her to go with him? She doesn't want it, Pa. Yeah, but he wants her. He needs her. Well, what am I supposed to do then? Just, just forget about trying to help her. Well, maybe you could uh, try to help him too. He needs it. You could try. Yeah, I guess I could try. Now maybe you could try taking your foot off the table. 
It's not as if I haven't told you before, Annie. I know, I know. And remember it. We can't take anything from anybody. But he offered. Annie, our name is Cain. And to a lot of people, that's just another word for dirt. Annie, we've got to be better. Don't you understand that? We've got to be better than anybody. But sometimes that's hard. Yeah, I know. It's always hard, Annie. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. Hello. Just want to make sure we're all set for our reading lesson tomorrow. Uh, no, I, I don't think I'll be able to make it. I'm sorry. Oh. You don't think so, or Wiley doesn't think so? You said you'd leave it up to Annie, Mr. Cartwright. You've got her answer. I've got what you told her to say, Wiley. No, I really don't want it, Joe. No, I don't believe that. Now, look, Mr. Cartwright. Now, you look, Wiley. Now, there's no reason for you to deny your sister the right to learn What to do read. you know about reason? You're a Cartwright. That means you're always accepted. You try crawling inside my skin for a while, and then you talk to me about reason. Annie and me have had to fight for everything oh, come we've come on, Wiley. Got. You don't have to. It's what you choose. When the only one that gets hurt is your sister. Look, all I want to do is help her to learn to read. Now, what's Why? The... What, do I need a reason to help her? Yes. I like her. I like her, or is that too difficult for you to understand? Oh, I can understand that. It's clear enough. You just stay away from my sister, Mr. Cartwright. You hear me? You stay away from my sister. me to give you this list of some extra supplies to get in town. You mind if I ride along with you? We don't have much choice, do we? Wiley, you going to town, Joe? Yeah, well, I'd like to if you don't mind the company. Hmm? Oh, I don't. Well, if you two sit there gabbing all day, we'll never get going. Take the ring. Hello, Roy. Everything all right? Just fine, no problem. Take him in and lock him up. Take the cuffs off, will you? Help. I'll take the horses over to the stable. Hi, there, little Joe. How you doing, Roy? What's bringing you to town today? I'm just picking up some supplies. I'd like to meet some friends of mine. Annie and her brother Wiley. This is Sheriff Coffee. Glad to make your acquaintance. You're gonna be working for us out at the ranch for a while. Good. So what's new in town? Oh, nothing much. I did just bring in a prisoner, though, that I believe your paw might remember. His name is Sam Kane. He's being sent back to Utah to stand trial. to the ranch. What do you mean? Well, I just thought you might want to see your father. Yes, I do. Well, let's go. No. I... I don't think Wiley would want me to see him. Well, I guess that's about all. Let's go. Wait a minute, Wiley. I might wait and let Annie go over to the jail and see your father. That's all right with you, isn't it, Wiley? She really wants to see him. Is he right, Annie? Do you want to see him? Yes.
All right, you go ahead. Wait, hold up a second. I don't want to see him. I just want to make sure that Annie's on. Well, Joe, did you bring your young friends over to show them my jail? No, right. Annie here would like to see Sam King. What for? He's their father. Better let him have your gun, then. You don't have to worry about that. I'm not going in to see him. All right. You take your time. I'll be outside. here with you? He's outside. What's he doing out there? Why doesn't he come on in? Hey, Wiley? No, 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 Papa. I, I got something to tell you. Sheriff. Yeah? What's Kane wanted for this time? Armed robbery. Is there any chance he can worm his way out of it? Well, not very much. From what I understand, there's plenty of eyewitnesses. And it's mighty hard to beat a case like that. Good. When are they coming to pick him up? Tomorrow, next day, maybe. Mm -hmm. huh. I can't say as I really blame him, Annie. Well, the boy's doing the right thing. From the standpoint of the way he looks at it, still, it's a shame. Our family had to come to this. He's paying for crimes he never committed. And so am I. What do you mean, Papa? Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, darling. I made my share of mistakes. But, but all those things I was charged with. <laughs> I had the reputation, Annie. If they didn't know who'd done something, they'd say, why, it must have been Sam Kane, and <laughs> I'd be on the run again. Innocent in the eyes of God, but not in the eyes of men. You're innocent? As innocent as you or Wiley. Well, not that it's going to make any difference now. But there must be something we can do. No, no, it's too late now. From what you've told me, Wiley hates me about as deep as it can go. I could never get through to him now. But you... Little Annie. Well, you've suffered the most. You're the one that saddens me, Annie. If, if only we could make us a new life together. Hmm? Go away somewhere and get us a good stretch of black land and farm it, where folks would take us for what we were, not for what others said we were. Oh, we could have us a glorious life. Couldn't we, Annie? 
Yes, Papa. Papa, if only there was a way. There is. There is, Annie. You believe I'm innocent, don't you? Yes. Then help me to escape. Bring me a gun, Annie. It's our only chance, Annie. I'm not just asking for me. It's for both of us. In another day, it'll be too late. I'll be in state's prison, and you'll be back in that bitter life with Wiley. But you can change that. You can give us a chance for a new life together. Will you give us that chance, Annie? Will you? Annie, time's up. That's all right, Roy. We understand. Well, uh, can she come back and visit me again? I suppose. You will be back, won't you, Annie? Yes, Papa. I'll be back. Wow. <laughs> Hello, Wiley. Annie told me what you're doing. It's a good thing. I'm proud of you. You're proud of me? Yeah. Son. <laughs> then I must be doing the wrong thing. Come on, Annie. Oh, nothing. I was just sitting here. You were reading. No. Don't be silly. What are you reading? Well, it's a book on words. It teaches you how to read words. It's called a grammar. I thought I should learn it so I... so I could, uh... Teach me how to read? Yeah. It isn't right that you don't know how to read. Annie, I should have thought about it. It's my mistake. I, I'm sorry. That's all right, Wiley. Here, you clean things. Oh, thank you. Wiley? Mm -hmm. You... You said you made a mistake. Ever think that maybe we made another mistake? I mean, you and me. About what? Our father. Don't ever call him that. I'm not ashamed of him, Wiley. I want to help him, Wiley. It's my pleasure, ma'am. I'm always ready and willing to take pretty girls for rides in the moonlight. And I want you to know that I'll always be grateful to you for what you've tried to do for me. Even over Wiley's objections? Wiley may not be the best brother in the world, but he's mine. I guess that excuses an awful lot. Yeah, I guess it does. You want me to go in there with you? No. I'd rather go on alone. I understand. I'll pick you up here in half an hour. Good evening, Annie. Thanks. Your pa just finished his supper. Go right ahead in. Thank you. You 
wait for me outside, Danny. Sheriff? Sheriff! Yo. Where's Annie? What do you want with her? I said, where's Annie? What have you done with her? I took her out of the jail to see her father. I told her she couldn't see him again. Well, I think she's old enough to decide that for herself. Annie's my sister. I've looked after her since we were little kids. Until she met you, she used to listen to me. Now, I've told you once to stay away from her. You take my advice. Don't make me tell you again. I don't need your advice. <laughs> Say anything? How long have you been trailing me? Since yesterday. Uh, why? Because of Annie. My sister's no concern of yours. Yeah, well, I think she is. What's happened is as much my fault as anybody's. No. It's Sam Kane. He could talk the birds out of the trees. He knows just where to hit you, the exact spot. It's an instinct he has, like a rattlesnake. And he poisons everything he touches, including Annie. She loves him, and he knows it, and he uses that love. He used it to get out of jail, and he'll keep right on using it as long as he needs it. And then he'll run away again, just like always. Well, he's not going to get to run very far this time. No, he's gone as far as he's going to go. All his life, he's been doing things to Annie and me. We've had to pay for it. This time, it's going to be different. This time, he's going to pay for it. Because I'm going to kill him. Come on, Wiley talks sense. Do you really think you can live your life after you've killed your father? I know I can. I feel like breathing fresh air for the first time in my life. People will say, there goes Wiley King. Remember his old man? Boy made up for that. That's what people are saying. No, I don't think so. I think they'll say, there goes Wiley Kane. The boy who murdered his father and ruined his sister's life. That's why when we find your father, 
We're going to bring him back to Virginia City. Alive. We're gonna find your father, we're gonna find him together. Exhausted. Here now. You sit down here. Here. You know, we'll be able to stop tonight. There's no line shack about 10 miles from here. Well, there's food there and a bed. Well, you'll get a good rest. I'm sorry, Papa. I'm holding you back. No, no, we're making good time. There's a lot of distance between us and Virginia City. Oh, but you just wait till you see where we're going. Up north. <laughs> You've never seen the Oregon country, have you? Oh, you think this is something. You just wait till you see Oregon. It's big country. It's deserts, forests, great rivers. The kind of country a man can get lost in. Start all over. Oh, Annie, Annie, I'm going to make it all up to you. Annie? You all right? Oh, I'm fine, Papa. Just I can hardly believe it. Here, now. You just rest. There's a stream just over the hill. I'll water the horse. You just rest here. Get your strength back. girl back. I'll be right back, Annie.
What's the meaning of this? What's wrong? <laughs> what are you stopping me for? You'd be pretty tough to miss from here, Kane. All right, let's have it. Slow and easy. All right, now let's go back and find Annie. I said move. She's all right. What do you think I am? Annie. Annie, I, 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 I was just going. Papa. I know. You don't have to say it. Make him say it, Annie. Make him say he's sorry. He's never had to say it before. Come on, Wiley. Put the gun down. Put it down. Mm -mm. You pull that trigger, I pull this one. Annie, I'm going to show you what kind of a man your father really is. Because I'm going to make him get down on his knees and crawl over to you and beg forgiveness. And then I'm going to kill him. Yeah, that's right, Wiley. You go ahead, you use the gun, pull the trigger. That's what he'd do. He wouldn't think about Annie either. You both heard it so much already, now you can finish the job. Because when you kill him, you're killing Annie, too. Well, go on, Wiley. What's the matter? Is it sticking in your throat? Are you thinking maybe it's about time you thought about somebody else besides yourself? I'm thinking about him. He deserves to die. He deserves to be killed for what he's done to us. What has he done, Wiley? Annie, please get out of the way. What has he done? What has he done? Has he filled our lives with bitterness and hatred? Has he changed every moment into despair? Well, answer me, Wally, has he? Yes! Are you so sure? Oh, Wiley, Wiley. Look into yourself. There's the bitterness and the hatred, the despair. But he put it there, Annie. Everything that's inside of me, everything that's inside of you, he put there. You don't know your father, Annie. You just don't know your father. I do. I guess I've always known. Same as I know what kind of a man you are. That hasn't stopped me from loving either one of you. deserve her as a daughter or a sister Annie Annie I was thinking that uh, maybe I going out to California, you know? Maybe the two of us, you, you and me. 
California? Yeah. Like we always dreamed about. You and me, huh? Wiley, it won't be the same, will it? No. No, it won't ever be the same again, any. I promise you. I promise you. Joe? This might sound foolish, but I've got to believe in someone. Hey, Sam, don't you think we ought to move him up the draw and lay low for a while? No, we're going to move him on up to our place. But what if someone sees us? You let me worry about that. Where's Billy? <laughs> he chickened out. Don't make jokes with me, sport. No, I'm serious. He cut out back there. Go look for yourself. back here uh, my cinch come loose i just stopped to tighten it yeah well it looks all right now you gonna stay around here all day no i i was just fixing to mount up hey boy you ain't turning yellow on me are you no what is that The card rights. No, Sam, don't! Let go of that. Let go! Keep after him! They got clean away, Hoff. Didn't even get a chance to get a look at them. Who you got there? Billy Penn. Hank Penn's boy? What's he doing here? I don't know. That's what I'm going to find out. You fellas get those cattle back up the north pasture where they belong. I'll take care of Billy.
just stay put, Ben. You got a nasty bump there. Mr. Cartwright, I didn't know what they was gonna do, honest. Who were they, Billy? I don't know, Haas. You don't know, or you won't tell me? I can't. I just can't. Look, Billy, cattle rustling's a mighty serious business. Now, your pa's been a good friend of mine for as long as I can remember. You wouldn't want me taking you over there and telling him what I caught you doing, would you? I can't tell you, Hoss. That's all there is to it. Don't you understand? And if he don't quit running around with that bunch of wild yahoos, he's gonna get himself in more trouble. Well, it's better than being a pig farmer. You know what people call us? Hank and Billy Penn, the pig pens. I'd do just about anything to get away from that. Even to covering up for a bunch of rustlers? Well, they ain't pig farmers. Yeah. Come on, son. Looks like you and me got to do a little talking with your pa. I can get up myself. All right. Have it your own way, boy. Come on. Sure ain't gonna make your Paul very happy, Billy. A lot he cares. He don't even know I'm alive. All he cares about is pigs. Howdy, Hank. Boss. Missed you last night, boy. Where you been? Out with some friends. All night? Why not? I ain't a kid anymore, Pa. We got company. You go on inside. We'll talk about this later, as soon as Mr. Cartwright leaves. I got nothing to talk about. I have. Now get. I'm sorry. Oh, it ain't your fault, Hank. That's just it, Hoss. I think it is. Billy and me, we just don't seem to hit it off no more. I can't talk to him. I can't even control him. He's gone wild as a year, and... I've been sort of hoping he'd grow out of it, you know? Oh, Hank. All boys got a few wild oats they got a soul. I did. Little Joe did. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if little Joe's grown out of it yet. But you know, sometimes it takes more than just growing. Yeah. What do I do? Beat his head in for him? Did that do any good? I don't know. I wish I knew the answer to that, Hank, but I don't. What brings you over here this time of day, Hoss? Hank, on second thought, I think I'll let Billy tell you that. See you, Hank. Well, say hello to your pa for me. There's a piece of pie over there. Mrs. Randall brought by, if you're hungry. What, does she think we need charity? No. She just figured maybe you were getting tired of my cooking. Where'd you meet up with Horse? Didn't he tell you? No, he said he figured you'd do that. Did 
You go over there to ask him for a job? No. What makes you think I'd do that? Well, maybe this farm here is getting a little cramped for your size. Uh, maybe you figure that horses and cows are more important to deal with than pigs. Well, ain't they? Son, somebody's got to raise pigs. Well, they're clean, fine stock. And there's always a market for them. You're proud of it, aren't you? Why shouldn't I be? It's honest work. Don't you know what people call us? I've been called a lot of things in my lifetime. It don't matter what folks say. Well, it may not matter to you, but it does matter to me. Billy! You forgot your lunch. I ain't hungry no more. And you didn't tell his father about it? No, sir. Well, don't you think you should have? Well, Paul, I started to, but Dad Bernard seemed like old Hank had the weight of the world on his shoulders about that boy, and I, I just didn't want to add to it, that's all. Hoss, I know how difficult it is for Hank without a wife or mother to help guide the family, and I know what he's going through. Every father does when his children start growing up, but if Billy's getting into serious trouble, I think Hank ought to be told about it, don't you? I guess so. Well, what does that mean, I guess so? Well, Paul, I guess I'm looking at it from Billy's viewpoint. If you knew all the trouble that little Joe and me got into when we was growing up, why, you'd have wore yourself out thrashing us. And old Billy's right there at that same stage now, the same age, where everything his pa does is wrong and nobody understands him. And well, He gets into a lot of trouble, but he don't mean to. You know what I mean? Yes, I think I know what you mean, but cattle rustling is a little more serious than some adolescent prank. Well, now, that's just it, Paul. I ain't for sure he was rustling. He was out there with him, all right. But when I first saw him, when I rode up that hill, he was up there fighting with one of them yahoos. Fighting? Yeah. This other kid had a rifle, and Billy was trying to keep him using it on me. I see. So I figured I owed him something. At least to let him tell his pa about it himself. Yeah. You think he did? <sighs> I hope so, but I doubt it. There, big boy. Doggone it. I'm sorry I've neglected you lately, but it don't seem like there's enough hours in the day. If we're gonna win that blue ribbon at the fair. We got a lot of work to do. Hello, Hoss. Howdy, Billy. Ain't you gonna ask me why I'm here? Well, I figured you'd tell me when you got ready. What you doing? Getting old Macho here ready for the fair in Virginia City at the end of the month. Boy, he sure is a good-looking bull. Yeah. Yeah, he's sort of a special breed. He's a new strain around here. I sure would like to see him win himself a blue ribbon at that fair. Think he can? A lot of hard work. He's got a chance, yeah. Boy. I'd give anything to have a bull like that. Look the way he holds his head. Yeah. Yeah, he knows he's a champion, don't he? I reckon that's a hard thing, being a man. Hardest thing we have to learn in this life, Billy. Matter of fact, a lot of fellas never quite make it. How do you learn? Well, it's a different thing with different men, I reckon. When it happens to you, you'll know it, though. Mr. Cartwright, I come over here to tell you I'm sorry for what happened this afternoon. I reckon I acted pretty dumb. Yeah. I reckon you did it that, Billy. Apology accepted. 
I didn't know they was gonna rustle your cattle, honest. I believe you, Billy. Really? Sure. Ain't very often anybody believes what I say, including my pa. Billy, are you sure you're giving him a chance? He don't give me much of a chance, Mr. Cartwright. If he'd only... Only what? If he'd only let me do something on my own, like raise a few head of cattle. I've asked him. All he cares about is pigs. Billy, you, uh, you really want to be a cattleman? Oh, boy, do I. Mr. Cartwright, I, I'd do just about anything. Billy, I got myself a real problem. Maybe you can help me. What kind of problem? Well, like I was telling you, I'm trying to get old Macho ready for that fair, and well, what with all the work I got to do on the ranch, it just ain't got time. Maybe you can take him over for me, huh? I know that's pretty unfair of me to ask, I reckon. I mean, it takes a lot of work to get a bull ready for a fair. And a lot of trimming, grooming, and brushing, and combing. Yeah, a fella has to have a real feeling for cattle to get one ready for a fair. Reckon you could help me. What, what's that old Kellerman kid's name? Alex, ain't it? Yeah, Alex Kellerman. I bet he'd help. He'd be a hand, too. An old kid had a calf in that last Virginia City fair, and as I recall, he did pretty doggone well. Yeah, he'd be a good hand. Mr. Cartwright, if if I did it, would we have to tell my pa? Billy, wouldn't you want to tell your pa? No, he wouldn't understand. Well, any way you want to work is fine with me. And it's a deal. All right, he's yours. You been keeping yourself. I missed having you around. I've been kind of busy, Sam. I'm on my way to the Ponderosa. I've been working. <laughs> so are we, ain't we, boys? <laughs> I uh, thought you'd like your share. I, I I don't deserve it, Sam. I didn't earn it. Well, you're a member of the gang, ain't you? The rules say we all share and share alike. Here, take it. Sam, I don't want it. What's the matter? You trying to weasel out on us? Hmm? You know the rules, don't you? Once you're in, <laughs> you're in for life. I'll give you this tonight, in town at the Silver Dollar. But Sam, I can't make it. Billy, I said be there and wear your gun. Boy. Hi, Billy. Uh, hi, Shale. Uh, you see Mr. Cartwright? Hoss? Uh, we left him down in uh, Sawhorse Pasture about a half hour ago. He'll be here about dark or a little after. Oh. Uh, can I help you? Oh, uh, I'll wait. Uh, well, I, uh, I could use some horn wax and some soap. <laughs> some horn wax? Yeah. What are you gonna do, kid? Try to wax up some of them pigs of yours? I can uh, get it for you, Billy. No, just I... wait a minute, wait a minute. He ain't told us what he wants it for yet. I'm fixing up a bull for the fair. A bull? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of bull right there. Everybody knows that the pig pens don't have nothing but pigs. 
Pigs and more pigs. Don't ever use that word again. It so happens Mr. Cartwright gave me the job of fixing up Macho Segundo for the Virginia City Fair. Macho Segundo, huh? Yeah. All right, kid, let me hear one now that I can believe. I'll leave the kid alone, Burkhart. Well, he shouldn't be coming around here telling us all them big lies. I ain't lying. Uh, don't pay no attention to that flannel mouth, Billy. He's just trying to get your goat. He's trying to get his pig, you mean, don't you? <laughs> Hold everything here. Everything, Billy. Burkhart's just joshing you. Can't you see that? Yeah. Hey, Billy, you got gotcha. your. Hey, Billy. Man, that kid is plumb sensitive, ain't he? Well, you rode him pretty hard. I don't know why you should. He seems like a nice enough kid to me. Well, how was I to know? Well, let's take care of the horses and get washed up. Yeah, we'll get the herd moved by noon. I don't even want to think about it. Boss. Yes, sir. Get one of the hands to put up the horses, huh? All right. Hope old Hopsey's got plenty of food for supper. If they're hungry and danger. Hey, what's the matter? I was just looking for Billy Penn's horse. He's supposed to be over here working on Macho. Well, maybe Billy's father's got to do some chores for him. You're monopolizing too much of that boy's time. Hey, slave driver. Huh. Howdy, man. What if I can get one of you fellas to put our horses up tonight? Hey. Burkhart. What happened to you? I guess I was talking when I should have been grinning, horse. He got the rawhide in old Hank Penn's boy, and the kid just about took off one of his ears for dinner. Oh, yeah? Billy, uh, Billy's been here, huh? Yeah, about two hours ago. He came looking for you. Said he wanted to borrow some horn wax and soap. Said he was getting old Macho Segundo groomed up for the fair. I got the Josh and the kid about them pigs of his, and that kid come at me like a wild-eyed scratching bobcat. Kid's got a plum bad temper to be so young. Was he telling the truth, Hoss, about you letting him work on that high-priced bull of yours? Yeah, yeah, that's the truth, all right. Uh, look, fellas, if I was you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't josh him about them pigs. Uh, you're telling me? He lit out of here like a devil was after him. I bet that kid's still running. Wanting soap and wax, huh? Yeah. See you fellas morning. Billy? Yeah? Where you been, boy? Out. That makes every night this week. Don't you think I ought to get some kind of explanation? Why? I ain't one of your pigs. Boy, you been drinking? Yeah. So what? I've been patient with you. But there'll come a time when I won't be. Let it come, old man. Let it come. You asking me to whip you? 
If you think you're man enough, come ahead. Horse was over to see you last night. You know what he wanted? Reckon I do. You been over at the Ponderosa? What if I have? You got no business over there. You're up to no good. You would think that, wouldn't you? What should I think? You've been out every night till all hours. Where are you going? For a ride. Do you mind? I got work for you to do around here. You stay home. I had something important to do. Billy, I'm sorry about what happened last night with the hands. They, they didn't mean no harm. They shouldn't have called me those names. Billy, one of the first lessons you got to learn growing up is to take a ribbon from older men. They didn't mean no harm. It's just their way of having a little fun, that's all. Well, I don't like to be made fun of. Look, son. You gotta learn to laugh at yourself. If you can't, you might as well give up right now. But Hoss. Now, there, there's a fine example. You just call me Hoss. How long do you think it took me to get used to being called that? Oh, Billy, life gets mighty tough at times, and if you don't learn to laugh at it, you'll never lick it. Now, we got a lot of work doing on Macho. We don't get started. Sure, Hoss. Mr. Cartwright. No. No, huh? it's Hoss. Now, come on, let's get old Macho back in the stall. Come on, Macho. I thought that uh, if you want to sleep that badly, you might try your bed instead of my chair. I guess you're right. Up you go. Oh, I'm so glad we got those herds moved. I've been, I've been counting cows in my sleep. Oh, this was awesome. Oh, he was he was out in the barn with Billy Penn last time I saw him working with Macho. You want me to get him? No, I'll I'll, uh, I'll talk to him later. Listen, I'm going to Carson City tomorrow morning. I want you and Hoss to make sure that our entry is registered properly at the fair. Hey, you know, Billy's doing a fine job with that bull. You ought to see him. Yeah, I have seen him. 
I'm afraid that isn't all that Billy's been up to. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? The sheriff coffee was over this morning. He thinks that Billy's running around with Sam Carterfield and that gang. Well, is he sure about it? No, he's not sure, but he's, you know, he's trying to find out. He thinks he might round that gang up next week sometime. I sure hope that Billy isn't among them. Up you go. Right. Marshal. Sure looks fine, Billy. Sleek as a teardrop. Think he's got a chance, Hoss? A chance? He's doggone right he's got a chance. Why, he'll knock those judges right out of the seat. Yes, sir. He sure looks fine. You've done a mighty good job with him, Billy. Well, tomorrow's a big day, huh? Yep. I got our cart and everything all ready to go. Well, I mean, we'll cart him in. We don't want him walking. I want him losing none of that pretty fat. Well, I reckon there's nothing more we can do tonight. Guess I must be getting on home. Night, Billy. You know, I ain't never had anybody I could really look up to before. Guy needs somebody, you know? Billy. Not your paw. I wanted to, Hoss. I really did. Oh, it was a time when I wanted to be just like him. Then I grew up and saw what he was. Night, Hoss. Billy. You will never know what a fine man your paw is. Then why don't he act like it? What are you doing in that barn? Pa? Hank! Hank! Oh. Billy. You wouldn't let me explain, would you? You wouldn't give me a chance. Hank, I can explain all this. Maybe I should have before now. Come here, I want to show you something. Ain't he something? And Billy did it all by himself, Hank. Why didn't he tell me? I don't know. I reckon he wanted to surprise you. He wants you to be proud of him, Hank. Son? See what I mean, Hoss? see where some of that fun is going to start. Come on. Hello, Mr. Pigman. Hold up there, Pigman. 
just want to pass the time, indulge in a little friendly chit-chat with a real pig man. Let me buy. I declare, you're just not friendly at all today, are you? Where's pig boy? You've been seeing my boy lately. That's right, Mr. Pigman. Billy running around with trash. You know all the answers today, don't you, Pigman? And I got some advice. Keep away from Billy. Mm -mm, move aside, boys. He's a tough old pig. Look at them pies, Joe. Hi, Miss Millick. Hey, you look at the pies, so I got something better to look at. Uh, Miss Millie, won't you give me a big old piece of that big old juicy looking apple pie there? Huh? You going to the dance tonight? I might be. Well, what's that mean? You got another date? Well, no, silly. I have work to do. At the dance? I'll be in the kissing booth. Oh, it's for charity, you know. Well, I mean, it, nothing wrong in doing it for charity, is there? Oh, no, I think it's great. Uh, would you like a piece of pie, Joe? I think I'll save my money for later. Sure is good, Joe. I'll bet it is. Dad, Barney, I gotta go over to the barn and get macho. We're keeping him over there, though, the judging. See you all next while. Bye, Miss Millie. Cousin. A little after one o'clock. You reckon we ought to get a bite to eat? Ah, oh, you and your stomach. Later. Anyway, you won't starve. I want to look up an old friend first. Who, oink oink? The pig boy? That's right. Billy Penn. <laughs> Come on. about it, big fella? You gonna win that ribbon for Billy? You're some animal. Now, easy now. Been a long time since I've been around bulls. He looks like a million dollars, horse. I'm mighty proud of Billy. Why don't you tell him so, Hank? I tried to this morning, horse. My tongue got tied up in my mouth like a bundle of rope. My people was never ones for speaking their minds. What can I do, horse? What can I do to let him know how I feel? That burning Hank just bust out with it, that's all. Just can't teach an old dog new tricks. We're doggone if it ain't Billy Penn. Sam, good to see you. Good to see you too, Billy. Where's your black bandana? I left it home. He left it home. What's this, Billy? You joined up with us, didn't you? Sam, I've been thinking. Look, you let old Sam do the thinking. Now, if we let you out, that puts us all in a tight spot, see? What do you mean? Well, you know too much, boy about us. I wouldn't tell anybody. Well, now, how can we take that chance? How do we know? Sam Cotterfield, I told you to keep away from my boy. Now, get. Do you detect a strong odor of, uh, pig? 
I sure do, cousin. Phew! I smell pig. Who are you gonna whip now, pig man? You hear me, pig man? You're nothing but a dirty, stinking pig pen. Pa, don't let him say that. Pig man, run! Look at that stinking pig man, run! Sam! Sam! Billy, 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 Billy! Calm down, settle down. Leave me alone. Settle down, Billy. Pig boy, you remember what I told you, and you remember good. Sam, let me tell you something. About the healthiest move you can make, all of you. That is, unless you want to get those pretty faces bashed up. Just get out of here. I mean right now, get. Come on, boys. Let's get out of this stinking place. It's almost 2 o'clock, Bill. We better go get Macho out of the barn. Well, just leave me alone, Billy. Billy. Turn around here, boy. Look up at me. Look up at me! You've been sulking and puning around here just about long enough. You don't want to be a man, do you? You think you'll get more attention walking around dragging that bottom lip around between your feet, huh? I got a suggestion for you, Billy. If you're going to grow up, you grow up right now. Or go off and join that garbage heap with that Sam Cotterfield and that bunch. You saw what happened. They humiliated him. And he just took it. He's a coward. Hank Penn, a coward. Not hardly, boy. Not hardly. Let me tell you something. Your pa is one of the bravest men I ever knew in my life. He's had battles you don't even know about, boy. And he won them. Won them all. No. Your pa, he ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. He knows what he is. He's a man. You're wrong, Hoss. He does have to prove something to me. Hey, boys. Looks like the pig man wants to be a cow man now. You've got no business in here. I got lots of business in this barn, pig man. You ain't gonna like none of it. You do anything to upset this bull, and I'll break your head like I should have done before. Well, now, who said anything about hurting the bull? But uh, it is an idea. I'm warning you. Hey, you guys. I think the old pig man's in love with this bull. Ain't that awful? Why, that's bound to make them pigs of his powerful jealous. You keep your hands off that bull. Cousin, you ever see a, a one-eared bull? Can't say as I have, cousin. He be sad. You hold it for me, sport. You're about to see a one-eared pig farmer.
I just couldn't wait till the night to get that first kiss. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be right back. Talk to you. Let's go. Hey, look at the hog wallers. Joe, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Big as you are out there playing on mud pies. like I got a man for a son. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Pa. Looks like I've had a man for a pa all along. Just wasn't smart enough to know it. Hey, you two. We got a blue ribbon winner. Did you forget? Oh, no, we haven't forgot about it. Have we, son? No. No, sir. How could we forget about something as important as that? Order. Yeah, that's all right, Bob. Take your time. I'll be back in a little while. Right. It's very tough to get three in a row. Ah, that's really remarkable shooting, though. Uh, you two fellas must be about the best gun hands in town, huh? Yeah, we're pretty good. Just one better. Stand right over there. Now, who's that? His name's Joe Cartwright. Hey, little Joe. Hi, Pete. Somebody over there I want you to meet. Uh, who is he? he? Says he's from St. Louis. His name's Fitz. I don't win. Hi, Joe. This is, uh... Little Joe Cartwright, Mr. Fitz. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mr. Cartwright. My pleasure. Nice to see you. I'll show you how it's really done. It's the best in the territory. Uh -huh. uh, it'd be a privilege to see you in action, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, that is, if uh, you don't mind going along with an Easterner's whim. <laughs> you see, I, uh, I've always been fascinated by the West, especially the way you fellas handle your guns. Hey, go ahead, Joe. There's still three bottles left. Uh, that's what I call a real shooter. I'd appreciate it if you let me buy you a drink, all of you. After a demonstration like that, I feel I owe you something. All right, you got a deal, but I'm buying. All right, whatever you say. Oh, good morning. Good morning. 
Boy, this town sure gets lively on payday, don't it? <laughs> sure do. Well, payday's a good day for everybody. Yeah. Seems like it's better come night. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I better get to the bank before it closes. Uh, don't forget to pick up those clothes up in your rope wheel. Right, right. Hey, Paul, I'll meet you over at Silver Dollar. Little Joe promised to buy us a beer before we went home. I don't want to let an opportunity like that get clean away. Neither do I. See you in about 20 right. minutes. <laughs> Yes, sir, you boys sure know how to handle a gun. It was so fast, I couldn't even see it. Thanks, Sam. much of a whiskey drink. Slows you down, huh? Yeah, to a crawl. I can understand how it'd be dangerous for a man like you. You need razor-sharp reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> you find that amusing, sir? You're a dude, aren't you, mister? I'm from St. Louis, yes, sir. Uh, from St. Louis, I guess that does make you a dude, all right. But these young men have been taking me in hand. They've been showing me how a six-gun is handled. Mister, you don't go to a kindergarten class to learn about a six-gun. Look, we're just having a nice, friendly beer here in a public bar. So why don't you go about your business, huh? Hey, you're a real tough kid, aren't you? Yeah, I get by. Go on. Show them how many notches you've got on your gun. Well, that's the way it's done, isn't it? One notch for every man that you've killed? Come on, how many notches do you have? Go ahead, kid. Show them how many notches you've got, huh? Don't you watch it, mister. Oh, you're a real tough kid, aren't you? Kid, you've got a lesson to learn. Gentlemen, 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 please. Please, this, this bar is too crowded for any gunplay. Now, take your quarrel outside. All right. I'll meet you at the warehouse at the other end of town, where you bottle babies were playing. I'll be there tomorrow morning at 6.30. I'll be there. Good boy, Joe. You can take him easy. Sure, Joe. He's just another old son. Well, cat. you got yourself a real gunfight challenge, Mr. Cartwright. Ah, but I suppose that doesn't bother a tough young rooster like you, huh? Just between the two of us, how many notches do you have on your gun? Look, we will lay off that stuff now. Ah, uh, you don't want to brag, huh? Hey, you fellas tell me. How many men has the kid got to his credit? Oh, how many is it now, Joe? Ten or eleven? Ten or eleven? Hey, that's really something. It's Wynn's idea of a joke. A joke? Oh. Well, from the way you fellas were talking before, I thought... Oh, I see. All that uh, was just talk. What do you mean, talk? You've seen little Joe shoot. Oh, yeah, bottles, yes. But it's quite a different thing when your target can shoot back. huh? Isn't that right, Mr. Cartwright? I'm willing to lay a little bet that Mr. Cartwright won't even show tomorrow morning. Why don't you shut your mouth? What's the matter with him? 
I said was that I was willing to bet money that he wouldn't show at the fight tomorrow. That was all. Why don't you put money where your mouth is, mister? How's $5,000? Can you match it? I ain't got that kind of money. Well, how much you got? Hmm? Order any pop. Yeah. 30 bucks? 30 bucks. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your name, sir? Uh, Sam Tucker's the name, friend. <laughs> well, I wonder if you'd mind holding the bet, Mr. Tucker, please. Why not? Be glad to. Now, that's $30 that little Joe doesn't show. Or if he does, that the other fellow takes him. Hmm? Anybody else want to get in on the action? Huh? I got $5,000 here. Hey, Who fish. wants to bet on... I'll take 50 on Joe Cartwright. All right, Pete. That's 50 on little Joe Cartwright. Yeah, Mr. Tucker. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, one at a time. 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 One at a What's going on here? Did you heard? Heard what? Well, Joe's been challenged at a gunfight in the morning. What? That fella there is taking bets. Joe won't even show up. I don't understand it. Paul, I left him less than an hour ago. How could he get in so much trouble this quick? Well, we're going to find that brother of yours and find out. All right, here's that. Hey. of the 5,000. Mr. Tucker has all your bets written down. And the last this money goes for drinks on me. So step up. Let's go. I'll take a few whiskey. Give me a whiskey. Give me a whiskey. Don't worry, honey. Business will pick up later tonight. Oh, no, no. I wasn't worrying about that. <laughs> Something else. That fell at the bar? Yeah. I knew him a long time ago. He didn't seem very happy seeing you. What's his name? Dan Taggart. I really don't know why I should even bother about it. I mean, after all, it's been a long time ago, and it's dead and forgotten. But, uh, I guess a girl never really forgets a man that she, that she knew when she was young, and Does she, Martha? She does if she's got good sense. I need a black king. Well? Not a thing, Paul. Boy, it just don't make sense. It's got to be some sort of mistake. Well, there's been a mistake, all right. It was your brother who made it. Now, you check and see if he's been to the general store. I'll, I'll ask down at the blacksmith's. Okay. Paul. There's got to be some sort of explanation. Let him make it. First of all, let's find him and check him there. Paul. Oh. What? He ain't over there. Reckon he could have headed back to the ranch? Oh, I don't know. He certainly got this town in an uproar. You know what that blacksmith wanted to do? What? You want to give me odds in the gunfight? You go up to the bank, see if he's there. I'll check into the warehouse. He should have been finished loading that wagon an hour ago. He should have been doing a lot of things this afternoon. All he succeeded in doing is getting himself into a peck of trouble. I'll meet you back here. Yes, sir. Well, I guess that's it, Joe. Right. Thank you. Right. What? I'm looking all over for you. Do you realize you have this whole town in an uproar? Do you know what's going on at the saloon? Yes, sir, I know. Well? Oh, it's just a little misunderstanding, that's all. Oh, just a little misunderstanding, that's all. A gunfight is a little misunderstanding. Now, what's it all about? I don't know, fell over in a bar, gave me a hard time, and I lost my temper. You lost your temper? I'll, I'll take care of it. And how do you propose doing that? I'll go, I'll go over to the hotel and I'll apologize to him. 
All right. As soon as you've done that, you get yourself up to the Ponderosa and stay there. Is that clear? Yes, sir, that's clear. I'll be home as soon as I can. Maybe I ought to go with you just to make sure. I can apologize to him alone. I promise then I'll be home. Hey, Joe, we've been looking all over for you. You ought to see the action over at the Silver Dollar. Old well, Sheriff Coffee would have a fit if he were here. Everybody in town's betting their pay on you. And one pull of that trigger boy can make us all rich. Why don't you two grow up? What do you mean, grow up? We better pay on you, Joe. Hey, uh, I mean, you are gonna show up, aren't you? No, I'm not gonna show up. You think I'll have a gunfight over nothing? But he challenged you and you said you'd meet him. So what? Well, like Pete said, we all got our pay on you. Right, fine. Maybe you two will know better next time. Hey, Joe, look, I mean, all the, you know, all your friends, the hands at the ranch, the people you know, they're all betting on you. You don't, you don't show up and you know what they're gonna say. What, that I'm scared? Look, I don't have to prove anything to the people in this town. You still gotta live here. If you don't show up, you know people are gonna talk. And they're gonna say you're a coward. You know that that's what everybody's gonna say. Well, little Joe. You still around? I thought perhaps you would have deemed it uh, advisable to stay away from town for a few days. Uh, but uh, perhaps your friends inside are right. You do have courage. Just what's your game, Fitz? Game? <laughs> oh, uh, the bets. Yeah, the bets. Well, I just know a sure thing when I see it. A chance to pick up a little quick money, as they say. On my life or the other man's? Now look, I didn't start the fight. You did. Uh, this code that uh, you all live by out here. That is very honorable, very noble, and very stupid. Why shouldn't someone make a good use of it? Well, there isn't going to be any fight. Fine. I win either way. And you lose either way. Yes, it's quite simple. Tomorrow afternoon, I'll be on the stage to San Francisco. And you'll either be dead or a disgrace. Good day, Mr. Cartwright. Is what I hear right? Uh, you're going to be in a gunfight? Who told you about that? It's all over town. Everybody's talking about it. I even put a few dollars on you myself. Yeah, you're a great big hero now, Joe. Look, Joe. I got something here you can use. Well, I've already got a holster, thanks. Joe. Not like this. I make it up special for some fella. Last year, he never come back to pick it up. I think maybe he got himself killed. <laughs> I'd let you have it for a very good price. No, thanks. Joe, this is special. It can't grab or bind. <laughs> it's got a spring inside. As soon as you touch the gun, it pushes it right up in your hand. It'll maybe give you an edge. Of half a second, Joe. I'm not interested. Joe, it could make all the difference in the world for just a few dollars. I told you I'm not interested. Yeah. Mr. Taggart? I wanted to talk to you. All right. Talk. Look, the whole thing had happened in a bar this afternoon. We both lost our tempers. Why don't we just call it that and forget it, huh? You trying to make a fool out of me, kid? 
Look, mister, I'm trying to square this thing. Now, it was just a spilled drink, nothing more. Certainly not worth a shooting. I made my play, boy, in public. I'll be at that warehouse in the morning. Oh, come on, this doesn't make sense. The whole thing is ridiculous. Is it? You may be willing to let this town call you a coward, boy, but I'm not. Nobody calls me a coward, mister. You just be there. Now beat it. you want to see you all right you've seen me Dan may I come in it's been a long time Drink. You do drink. Or only, uh, only professionally. I drink when I'm asked, if I want to. Dan, they say that you're going to fight that boy. They're right. Why? Well, I like to fight. Well, what's happened to you? Look, I didn't ask you any questions, did I? We're ten years older. Twenty years wiser, or are we? Why did you come up here? To talk for the kid? No. Look, just drink your drink and get out. Forget that you ever saw me again. Dan, look at me. It's too late. Now, just get out. Sally, wait. Sally, I'm sorry. I really am sorry, Sally. It's been so long. I haven't forgotten a moment. I don't, I don't know what you ever saw in me, ever. I saw the most handsome man I ever knew, and the nicest, and I was... You were beautiful, so beautiful. I remember the first time I ever saw you was at a church social with your ma and pa. You were hiding behind a, a great big caramel fudge cake. <laughs> Remember? That silly cake, how could I forget? What happened to us? Why didn't you come back? I was coming back, Sally. I was coming back with the Parsons. Your father's three hired guns met us. The Parson told me to, to leave. At least until he had a chance to talk to your pa. Well, I rode. I rode for two days trying to lose them. But they followed. When I hit a town, I... I got drunk. Real drunk. That night, I killed my first man. After that, how could I come back? With a posse on my neck? Oh, Dan, I didn't know. I didn't know. 
I heard about you. And how your pa and the whole town chased you out like you was, like you was an animal. Dan, the town didn't matter. None of that mattered to me. I, I just wanted you. I, I looked for you. I looked all over for you. I, I couldn't find you. you. I looked for you too, Sally. I looked. And the more I couldn't find you, the more I, or the more I drank and the more I killed. Dan, don't. It's over. Is it? Then why are you here? Why are you here like this? Painted up like that? Dressed like that? Why am I here? Don't you see what we've become? Dan, I love you. I've always loved you. And I've waited. Sally, I wish, I wish we could. No. Oh, Sally. Hey, Joe. You talk to that fella? Yeah, I talked to him. Well, what'd he say? I'd rather not talk about it now. What do you mean you'd rather well, not? Let me alone, Lee Austin. Joe! Joseph! He didn't feel like talking before he went up to bed. Oh? Did he talk to that fella in town? Yeah, but I don't think he had much success from the way he acted. Oh, well, we'll just find out. Joseph? Did you uh, talk to that fellow in town? Yeah, I talked to him. Well, what did he have to say? He wouldn't accept my apology. I have no choice now. You have no choice? What does that mean? You have no choice except to go into town and get yourself killed tomorrow morning? Yeah, that's right. Well, what kind of sense does that make? Well, it doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. But what do you want me to do? Just turn and walk away from it? Yes, just turn and walk away from it. That takes courage, too. There's no dishonor in that. I can't do that. You can't. Do you realize what those so-called friends of yours are doing in town? They're placing money bets on your life. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it. Now, you listen to me, young man. I don't want you to have anything to do with it. Just forget the whole thing. I'm a little old to be talked to like that. Then act your age. You stay here tomorrow. He'll ride out of town and the whole thing will be forgotten. Is that understood? So what happened, Paul? What happened? There's not going to be any gunfight. That's what happened. This was 30 years ago, and I was little Joe. I know what I'd be doing tomorrow. 
Yeah. I know what you'd be doing too, Paul. That, that's what makes that rub so tough, ain't it? You'd be going through with it. Yeah, foolish as it might be, I'd be gone. I was just up there telling him that he couldn't go. Five years ago, I locked the door on him. Kept him in his room. I was treating him like a child. He's a man. I'm afraid for him. I'm afraid for him too, Paul. He's your son. But he's my brother. Hey, Paul. How would it be if, if I went up and talked to him? You could try it. I will. Let's go get some sleep, huh? I'll be up in a bit. Yes, sir. Good night, Paul. Joe, can I come in? Yeah, come on. I was just downstairs talking to Paul. He seemed pretty upset. Yeah, I know. I thought I'd come up and see if he wanted to talk. I guess everything's been said that there is to talk about. Yeah. That fella really rode you pretty hard, huh? Yeah, he sure did. Well, that burned it. I don't know how you feel. Man just naturally hates to get his pride hurt. But that burning Joe, it ain't worth getting killed over. No more lectures. Huh? I've been through that already tonight. Hey, maybe if I went into town and got my hands on that Yehu, he wouldn't be so happy to get himself in a gunfight, huh? Yeah, bro, that's all I need to have you go in town and fight my battles for me. That'd really fix me up. Dad burning Joe, you, you're my little brother. If anything was to happen to you, I'd... Yeah, don't worry. Nothing's gonna happen to me. You mean, you might not go through with it? I just don't know yet. I gotta... Gotta think on it a little while. You can see that, can't you? Yeah, Dad Barnett, I can see it. I can understand it. But I don't like it none. Thanks. For what? being my brother. Don't they ever go home? It's pay night. What time is it? About midnight. Pay night is a big night, Dan. Don't. I don't like hearing you talk that way. I have to live. Like that? Isn't there anything else you could do? I took what I could get. Stop it. I don't want you to go down there. With those drunken pigs. Sally. Don't leave. I don't want to be alone. Stay with me. Oh, Dan. Just talk to me. All right. I'll stay. Listen to him down there. It's the 
same in every town. A Roman circus. You give them a killing, a hanging, a shooting. They all turn into animals. Sally. It's daylight. Oh, Dan. Is it time? Shh. Oh, Dan. Oh. You'd better go now. Oh, please, Dan, don't. I'll be leaving town in about an hour. One way or, or the other. I don't want you out there. Do you understand? No. no. You're still so beautiful. Who's the girl? That's none of your business. You've been up all night again, haven't you? Probably boozing it up with that shut up. What's gotten into you, Taggart? You know, you're getting jumpier every day. I'll tell you what's gotten into me. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of me. And of the stinking things I do. Sick, huh? I just remember what you were when I picked you up in Denver. At least I was clean. Clean? You're a two-bit gunfighter turning yourself into a bottle of booze. Someday I'm gonna put a fist right in that mouth of yours. Or a bullet through that fat skull. Now, just take it easy, Taggart. You get everything you want. You got all the money you need. You got an easy life. All I have to do is commit murder for it. Do you know what it's like killing a man? You think it gets easier, don't you? You're a coward, Fitz. 
You've never faced a man in your life. <laughs> Talking to you is like, it's like a rabbit trying to explain speed to a snail. kid came up here last night. Trying to square it. Came to me trying to square it. Imagine that. Poor kid. He's going to get killed just to make you richer. You better watch out, Tackett. Or it might be you. You don't stop building that stuff. Yeah, you're right. Could be me someday. Some night, some ugly morning. I'm gonna meet some punk kid who's gonna take me. That'll be the end of it. Every crummy little town's got a boot hill for bums like you and me. Decent people, one place. Bums in Boot Hill. Rocks instead of flowers. Oh, don't worry, Harry. I'm gonna shoot that Cartwright kid as straight and as fast as I can. Why did you have to pick that Cartwright kid? One of those other two would have been just as good. More like the usual loudmouth clod you always get. Because that Cartwright kid has quite a following. Made it easier to take their money. Yeah, maybe a lot easier than it'll be to take him. You don't really think he'll show, do you? He'll show pride. Pride, that's what does it. That's what roped me in. The great code of the West. Face your man or sell out your self-respect. Yeah, that's what gets us all. Well, don't tear it down. It's made us a lot of money, you as well as me. The only difference is that I do the killing. 610. You better let me be there for five minutes before you show.
morning, Mr. Taggart. Well, gentlemen, little Joe Cartwright has just three minutes before he forfeits. Three minutes, gentlemen. Hey, Fitz, what's he trying to do? What? That is not the same gun rig he was wearing yesterday, pal. You'll have to ask him, friend. I just take the bets. And you're about to forfeit the whole thing. Two and a half minutes, gentlemen. There he is. There's Joe Cartwright. Give my 400. You think it was really worth it? 